Good morning. This morning, I'd like to think upon these words of Ernest Holmes. We should expand our thought until it realizes all good, and then cut right through all that appears to be, and use this almighty power for definite purposes. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall have what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. In his name means like his nature. If our thought is unsullied as the mind of God, if we are recognizing our oneness with God, we cannot pray for other than the good of all men. In such prayer, we cannot dwell upon adversity. The secret of spiritual power lies in a consciousness of one's union with the whole and of the availability of all good. Well, you know, this week I had yet another opportunity to come to the imperative understanding of only God and only good, of the absolute spiritual necessity built into the law that all must be aligned with love if one is to experience the fullness of divine abundance in all its freedom. That this essence of the universe, which binds us all together and is the very life of our being, can only work for us and is always working to increase us by means of our experiences that one of the great tasks running throughout all of life for all of us is to bring all up to love's level. This week I had what we metaphysicians call an appearance in that I finally decided that I wanted to transport my car, which I love, and the last item that I had left in Los Angeles. I wanted to transport it to the East Coast and have it available for my use. Now, this car I had actually bought one month before it became necessary to come to New York, and I had left it with a close friend, thinking at the time that I would return and what a great choice I had made, leaving my car in the best of hands. Well, as you all know, I have been on the East Coast for 11 months now, so my friend has been rich in the free use of my car for this amount of time. So having made this decision, I was excited, having dreams of driving around in my car, being thrilled with the possibility of finally getting my money's worth from my purchase, being, ah, at last united with my car that I love, and I even decided to pay the greater amount of money to have it safely transported on a van rather than wait for someone to show up to drive a car cross country for less. Well, to make a long story short, my car arrived at my parents' house a few days ago, and I was informed that it is in poor, perhaps unretrievable condition, a mess, uncared for, that it hadn't been worth shipping at all. Even the man who was shipping it was a commiserating at my poor fortune. So here we go, the appearance. How to align this one with love. I was so angered, feeling betrayed and struggling with how to release this one, how to bring this up to the level of love, how to expand my thought to the level of knowing that this experience makes me wealthy. For intellectually, I know that there is only perfection always operating and only wealth. Well, how could this prosper me, when all I could feel was betrayed, abused, unappreciated, and bereft? It was as if I had bought this car for my friend, given it to him as a present, and he had used it up and it returned it to me, and on top of it, I paid for it. Well, I thought about this, and it 
I said, well, why not? Okay, let me say that I am so rich and so rich in cars and transportation and all that I freely gave my car as an exorbitant present to my friend. And it was my good pleasure to do so. And out of my luxurious givingness, luxury of transportation shall be provided me in even more stupendous ways. I shall be maintained in the greatest transportation, cars, planes, boats, and all, for all my days. Now this was a great relief. I had expanded my concept of good, flipped round to the consciousness of love, and there is no trace of negative feeling towards my friend. How liberating. I also realize that my good is always expanding, and in order to experience new good, we must be willing to release old form. Once again, affirming our greater wealth, for something must be given, given up, in order to make room for the new. Our new good cannot find room in a crowded atmosphere. So, I don't know what will show up for me in terms of form, but I know my wealth is always flowing from form to form, and that when a form can no longer contain or keep up with the fullness of my growing good, it shall dissolve from my experience, freeing my wealth to flow over into a greater expression, which is just what it wants to do. And this is just one of the great aspects of the perfection that we live in. So let us go within now and get a deep sense of that essence of love, of light, and total perfection that we live in. Let us give thanks for our indestructible consciousness of love and wealth and good. Let us recognize that we are one with the magnificent power of life, love and release. And to any situation lingering in the shadows of consciousness, the Netherlands of doubt or fear, we say, I free you now to be the love and the good that you are. And I now experience a magnificent magnitude of increase. I soar at the summit of consciousness now free and unencumbered and supplied at the highest levels in all my ways. No loss finds root in me, for by the laws of perpetual ongoing increase, I am always free. And so it is.